Hi, everyone. Welcome to the live stream tonight, to the Zamdima Sizaweka live stream. Uh, my name is Lekwadi Makombo, and I'm with... Annette, also known as Nandi. Hi. So we are going to be your hosts for tonight, taking you through all of the discussion and art that we have for today. Uh, we have a lot of performances up for tonight. And what we want to try to do is to explore the issues of mental health through the arts. And our artists, our guest artists that are here tonight will be able to explore this through the pieces that they will share with us today. Uh, along with us for the discussion, we have Tilinao. She is a practitioner of mental health here in Malawi. And she'll also be part of the discussion, giving us more the technical side of mental health uh, in Malawian terms. So to get us started, we have quite a number of artists to set up. Um, do you want to introduce them, Annette? Okay, so we have four artists coming up. Um, we have Wati Basonungu, who goes by Wati. And he has an EP out called Lost Roots, if you want to check that out. And he likes to write from his experiences and surroundings, so I can't wait to hear what he's going to do. And then we have Malika, who is from Toronto, and she's a theater maker. And she directs and acts in plays, which is also amazing. So I can't wait to see what she has to present. Then we have Tigris, who is from Ilonga Malawi. Not only a singer, but a producer, a TV and radio presenter as well. Um, so she does a lot. And uh, I think she's going to sing for us tonight, which is going to be amazing. And then finally, for the first group, we have Menes, who um, is from Congo and has become uh, known pretty much nationwide because he started quite a while back in 1998 with the ADKS crew. Um, so can't wait to see what he's going to do as well. Yeah. So let's get started. Um, our DJ for tonight, uh, Malika, if you could start with the first performances. As men, as men, we were taught not to cry before we could even walk on our own two feet. Now we can walk, but with feet heavy bearing wounds, the tongue never speaks of. Shh, you are a man. Do not express your pain. Do not complain. Do not cry. Stop acting like a girl. Do you not know the woman like a tough man? So hold it together and be a man. But I've learned that sometimes it is exactly the calm ocean that drowns a man. And spoken feelings. And expressed emotion. So when the storm rises within us, we find ourselves struggling to sail those waters, drowning and screaming for a rescue that might never come. But breathe, smile, laugh, cry, sleep. I smile and laugh a lot so they say that I'm definitely not the type to know depression. But there are too many cracks in my soul, like I'm a drag. Especially in the night when I'm alone, far from everyone and everything that makes me forget it. And this moment, everything is real and raw. These walls do not allow me to hide and pretend anymore. The slump in my throat holds my breath, so I take deep sighs. And try to breathe, smile, laugh, cry, sleep. I struggle to sleep. That requires peace. So instead, depression, stress, anxiety, autumn turns to piercing wounds that I'm trying to cover up. The morning does not interest me, for death is more appetizing to a soul that is hungry for peace and freedom. My mind is being seduced by this rope. Should I take it? Should I not? Should I take it? Should I not? I know that they will mock me if I take this rope. They will not care about the trigger. And men 
We want to talk about everything except your pain because we have been made to believe that depression has a type, but it has taken way too many of us. Breathe, smile, laugh, cry, sleep. Breathe, smile, laugh, cry, sleep. Breathe, smile, laugh, cry, sleep. Hello, my name is Tigris, and I'll be doing the cover for Mad World. September is Suicide Prevention Month, and uh, just make sure that if you're going through something, share it. There's always someone out there who will listen and love you. All around me are familiar faces, or now. for watching and always
Hey, 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 welcome to my TED Talk. <laughs> I'm joking, we are here. My counselor told me that I should do this project for seven days where I like record myself verbally process. So this is kind of like Dear Diary. So here we go. <laughs> dear Diary, dear myself, I don't know. I am feeling good today. I am feeling strong, I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling grounded. Uh, I just started my new project that I got commissioned for by the Arts Council, so it's been really exciting. Um, I've been staying fit. I haven't been snacking on unhealthy food. I have not messaged my ex. <laughs> I'd say it's been a pretty successful day. Um, and yeah, I'm going to spend the rest of the night on a little walk and come back and journal and go to bed. So I guess that's my update for today. See you tomorrow. Hey, day two, gonna keep this super short. I have kind of been up working for the past like 24 hours. I got super inspired midnight last night for the project that I was telling you about yesterday and it's going super well and I have come up with like two or three drafts and I'm just finishing up the fourth uh, and I'm gonna pitch it tomorrow. So um, wish me luck for my Zoom meeting. Good luck, Mira. <laughs> Day three. If teardrops could be bottles, there'd be swimming pools filled by models. Told a tight dress is what makes you whole. If I love you was a promise, would you break it? If you're honest, tell the mirror what you know she's heard before. I don't want to be you anymore. I feel ugly that today. I was on a Zoom meeting and someone said to me in the chat, hey girl, it looks like you've put on the pounds. Well, fuck you. I'm spiraling, as you can tell. Um, and I'm trying really hard not to spiral right now, but here I am. <laughs> here I am. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, I'm good, thanks. <laughs> day three, day four, day four. Um, I'm doing great. Me and my friends of Scotch are having a nice little popcorn night after a very long day at work. Um, obviously, the commission got approved, the drafts got approved. And now I'm just chilling and Netflixing again. Drowning my sorrows in popcorn. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm fine. I am. I'm perfectly fine. Anyways, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye. I should have got my eyebrows done. And if I lose weight, the double chin would be gone too. <laughs> Shut up, Mira. Okay, stop it. Stop looking at me. Stop, stop. Mira, go away. No. I want to keep looking at you all the time, Mira. Go. Go. Go! What?
day. Teardrops could be bottled, there'd be swimming pools full of models. Told the tight dress is what makes you a whore. If I love you was a promise, would you break it? If you're honest, tell the mirror why you know she's her before. I don't want to be you. I don't want to be you. Yes, uh, hello, my name is Menes Laplume. Um, I'm presenting you a poem, uh, which is actually in French. Um, and I would love just to say what it's all about. So this poem is a story about um, someone who has been very strong um, and keeping a smile and, 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 and hiding their weaknesses um while so much was happening in their heart and uh they had so much pain and so much bleeding inside and they kept it as a secret and until they couldn't take it anymore and and they got um broken while keeping a big silence thank you Il a gardé les silences pour sauver son honneur. Il a préféré ne rien dire des peurs qu'il n'ait perdre son respect. Il a gardé un grand sourire embellir son visage alors qu'il pleuvait de la lave dans son estomac. Tout ce que les gens voyaient de lui était beauté, éclat et muscle d'un homme fort. Nul ne pouvait détecter les déluges de sang qui débordait son être intérieur. Il était entouré d'amis alors qu'en réalité, il était seul sur une île déserte et méconnue de tous. Évitant d'être une faible victime de la sympathie, il a gardé sa belle carcasse intacte alors que son moteur dépourvu d'huile s'est fondé jusqu'à ce qu'il s'est éteint dans un grand silence jusqu'à ce qu'il s'est éteint dans un grand silence. So, um, welcome back everyone. So I have with me Tilly now, as I introduced before. Tilly now is a mental health practitioner in Malawi. Hi Tilly now, maybe you can say a little bit about your background. Sure, um, as you've heard, my name is Tilly now. I am a counseling psychologist. So my specialty is in providing psychotherapy 
and um, it could yeah. be one-on-one -on -one or in a group setting and it usually has an approach that's more psychoeducational so i believe in providing counseling and then also educating people on the basics of mental health so that they can understand their own experience better thank you very much so we have the four artists that just performed with us uh tigris menace um wati and we also had a performance from malika so what we're going to do is we're going to open the floor to a discussion remember for those of you who are tuning in on our facebook or on how round uh you can go to our facebook and in the comments of the video please put in any questions or anything you'd like to ask the artists as we go along but to begin our discussion we just like each one of you maybe we can start with you menace could you just give us uh like a like a really quick one minute what made you what inspired you to talk about this piece and how it connects to the mental health issue uh from your side okay uh thank you very much for the question um first of all um as an artist i think a lot of artists we go through mental health issues because we we live in this um Yes, in this uh, a crazy world, most of the time aspiring for bigger things that are uh, delayed to come. And um, also well, struggling actually to, to make it because it's not easy to make it as an artist. So like, we always uh, try to push much and things don't work, we are frustrated. So yeah, um, I've experienced uh, mental health issues um, in my life. I, um, uh, for so many years as well uh, and frustrated and then um the other thing for the 12 past years um i so i had to leave my country the drc where i am from originally and then i came to malawi living as a refugee and um so my first years in malawi were very painful actually so i really struggled i uh, really struggled spent sleepless nights, sometimes weeks of no sleep because my brain was just thinking. And, um, and most of the time we, as men, we I didn't even have the, uh, the courage to cry uh, for myself because um, everyone around tells us that, oh, man, you're a man, you need to be strong, you need to be courageous. Uh, as what he said it in his poem. And um, I was that guy for a long time and, and um, naturally I'm very strong, but we need also to admit that um, even the strongest person, they have their times of weakness, which we need to admit that I'm weak now and I can cry or I can complain. So yes, I, I lived for many years without complaining to anyone or without crying, without and always being smiling. People that know me know that I always smile and I'm always happy, but uh, it's not always the same thing that is going on in my heart. Some days I'm also sad, you know? And also people around me actually expect me to always be happy because they know that I'm happy. When people are sad, they come to me because they know that they will, I'm there. I will laugh with them. I will tell uh, jokes and, and I, will, I will light them up. And um, so it has been very uh, difficult. Most of, uh, sometimes when people don't know, they actually they know the body of the person, but they don't know what is going in, inside. And no one actually wants to spend that time to know because, um, and yeah, so th that's why I, I tried to explain that, uh, to tell a story of someone who is strong and who everyone actually thinks they know, but they don't know. Um, and as artists, um, yes, I think I can speak on behalf of, of artists, I, I, I don't know that loud. I know that we are entertainers, we are, we are there to please other people. And, um, and people don't expect uh, you to be sad when you have to please them so like uh, there. And then, um, so, yeah, so it's a bit, and most of the time people don't even know us and, and it's very tough. Uh, you have groupies, you have fans <coughs> that don't know anything about you. And when they see you, they want that big hug and, and they, 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 they want that uh, 
friendship, which sometimes it's even fake because you don't even, uh, they don't even know your real name actually. And maybe you don't remember theirs. So um, oh, oh, yeah, it's what I'm talking about. Someone who everyone thinks they know, but they don't know uh, because the person is going through so much, which they don't tell uh, anyone. So yeah, uh, to summarize what I was <coughs> That's what uh, Thank you. Bad with me. So it's my own experience, actually. No, thank you so much. It is quite a beautiful piece. For those of us who are non-French speakers, we still got the sense of what you were trying to convey in that message. Maybe I'll pass it on now to Wati because your piece also was also somewhat leaning towards that. Could you talk a bit about your piece as well, as briefly as you can as well? Uh, all right, okay. Um... <laughs> What actually inspired me to write that piece was a personal experience. I wrote that piece when I was in a really dark place. Uh, it was struggle. I was struggling with depression, and I think at that point it had gone into a peak where I was actually considering suicide. You know, I think the only thing that saved me from going that far is uh, someone allowed me to talk about it and the presence, which is which is something I feel like is quite rare for men. You know. From the moment they were young, we were taught to be strong, you know? I mean, you see a mother telling a boy who's like three, don't cry, you're a man. I'm like, what? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that we, we get to grow up with that and it really messes up with the emotional health, you know? And yeah, being in that dark place brought me to a place where I was like, you know what? I, I know that I'm not the only one who's going through that experience. So I was like, let me write about it. You know, it's the best way that I know how to express myself. So yeah, I wrote that piece. Yeah. No, thank you. It is it is a very beautiful piece. Maybe do you want to weigh in? Maybe um maybe in the Malawian context, especially when we talk about mental health and how it comes out. Oh yeah, um, I would say there's a very huge stigma about mental health in Malawi, um, because the understanding about mental health in Malawi is just very <coughs> bipolar, and by that I just mean it's two extremes. Either somebody is supposed to be perfectly healthy or they are clinically insane and there's nothing in between. Mm -hmm. So when people yeah. think about somebody yeah. going through mental health challenges, the assumption is they're on that extreme and people don't know how to handle or help that person. They don't know how to be around that person and it can get very difficult and isolating for the person who's actually experiencing it. I really think the whole thing that um, both Wati and Menes has talked about, about the patriarchy and that cultural um, belief or that cultural framework that so many men are going through where nobody expects you to expect to express any emotions. Yeah. If you are expressing an emotion, it has to be either positive or something that demonstrates strength, which is like anger, violence, that's it. Yeah. Don't show anything that would make you seem weak, in quotes. Um, so a lot of men then end up having so many problems inside that they're holding on to and it could get to a point where somebody reaches a break <laughs> we had in the media um just news about how many men have committed suicide in this year in malawi mm -hmm. it was 85 percent of the statistic of all the suicides that have been committed in malawi this year were men mm -hmm. and I, I think that that's very telling yeah no, that's very true. And in fact, um, just growing up, there's a lot of pressure around just trying to be the perfect individual, not really expressing yourselves and talking about it. Mm -hmm. And it can be hard to have that weight. And we can see from like Menes' performance in Wadis, they're trying to put it from that angle. Mm -hmm. um, let's switch over to Tigris. Um, your piece was a cover, actually. It's actually a really good song, one of my favorite songs. Could you talk a bit about it? What inspired you to do it? What What was uh, the story behind that one? Um, okay, so basically, I, I originally wanted to do uh, a song that I wrote a long time ago called You're Not Alone, but I couldn't do that because my guitarist wasn't feeling well. But um, <coughs> I decided to go with Mad World because when I listen to it, I get emotional because I relate. Um, and also, like, the thing is, like, with the whole, um, with all the culture, you know, the in, in most parts of Africa, like, mental health issues are not taken seriously. You know, you'd be like, 
oh, I'm feeling this way, I'm feeling that way. You will literally be calling out for help um, in different ways. Maybe not, just, eh, suck it up. You know, things like that. You know, you get things like, for example, if you try to talk to someone about how you're feeling, say you're feeling um, suicidal and everything, and they'll be like, so who's going to take care of your kids if you die? Hey, do it. Well, let's see what happens. You know, things like that. And then people um, forget that when you talk about these issues, all you want is a fine. You know, just that one word, you know, like um, you're looking like for a shoulder to lean on. So in this song, there's one line that really gets to me. It says, um, the dreams in which I'm dying are the best I've had. Because literally there are things that people go through and I'm one of them. And then you get to a point some, sometimes where you're like, all right, I think I've had enough of this, you know? And you picture yourself dead and you feel at peace, like uh, that kind of thing. I mean, like the song that I originally wanted to write, You're Not Alone, I wrote it because uh, I'm a single mother. And then there are like moments where, sorry. Take your time. Can we go to somebody else perhaps? I think, um, let's give her a minute. Malika, would you like to talk a bit about your piece? and the connection you have to that one? Sure. Um, so I think that like we were just talking about the idea of being a perfect human. And I think that is for both men and women and women are expected to look a certain way. Okay, um, sorry. That's okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, so, so yeah, anyway, my point is some, um, the, things that everybody is looking for is just love and positivity, you know, um, encouraging words that everything would be fine, you know, so yeah, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't yeah. <laughs> It's okay. Don't, it's, don't, it's okay. Don't apologize. That's 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 extremely fine. Thank you for expressing, and it's a beautiful song, and you did a beautiful cover, and we all really can connect with yeah. that feeling that you're feeling right now. It's 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 all in us. Thank you so much for opening up, um, Malika. Would you like to talk a bit about your piece so that we then introduce the next artist? Sure. I think just. <laughs> I think we all are craving love, right? And love for who we are authentically in our whole selves, rather than just parts of ourselves. Um, so I think that's what the piece is about. The piece was about a girl who was struggling with loving herself and being loved by others. So much so that she couldn't even look at herself at some points in time. Um, so I think it was just how someone can be high functioning and be working on all of these amazing things, but still be suffering and dealing with mental illness. Uh, so that's that's my connection to the piece. No, thank you so much. Um, also, a lot of love coming uh, from, from us for us all on Facebook. Um, for those of you joining live on Facebook or on HowlRound, we thank you so much for the support, for your comments. Um, because of time, we're going to move on to the next set of artists. And we're gonna to try to get as many of your questions in at the end. I'm just seeing those now. Um, so what I'll do is um, we're gonna just quickly switch over to the next few artists um, and maybe my partner will introduce. So, um, so we have Amanda Shea. Shea? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I think she's gonna introduce herself, but she's from Boston and she's done quite a lot of poetry. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna say too much. Um, we also have Kathy, who is a poet and an activist and a singer. And she also has her own organization called Philartrophy. We are gonna have Kindu, who is a Malawian feminist also and a poet. She has a, um, an album called Bodies Are Not Homes, which is also really amazing. Um, and we also have Chim, who's a poet. He's also done some music. He has a podcast called Better Mondays. You should check that out. It's really cool. And he also has a YouTube channel. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody. <laughs> not at the moment. Um, 
We might have a sneaking guest artist come in. We, we don't might know. have a sneaking guest artist. We might have a surprise guest. Okay, so for now, let's uh, start with uh, the ones that you just introduced. And Malika, I hand it over to you. Set the ball rolling. Hey, y'all. Hey, it's your girl, Amanda Shea. I'm honored to be here. I want to thank Art Glow for inviting me to present this poem that I'm about to do for y'all called Resilience. I want to thank Marion Taylor Brown from Arts Connect International here in Boston, Mass, where we're, where we're at. Gang, gang. Hey y'all, hey, it's your girl Amanda Shea. I'm honored to be here. I wanna thank Art Glow for inviting me to present this poem that I'm about to do for y'all called Resilience. I wanna thank Marion Taylor Brown from Arts Connect International here in Boston, Mass, where we're, where we're at, gang, gang. Um, I just wanna thank them for inviting me up to the platform and being my true authentic self. Mental health is so important and mental health awareness is even more important. I feel as though black and brown women overcome so many obstacles and mental health is definitely one of those in definitely one of those categories. For me, I have grown up with a mother who has um, bipolar level two. I have one of my best friends who's also bipolar level one. And I watch them struggle with it, but they make sure that they take their meds and they make sure that they do what they need to do to keep themselves centered. It is a really tough battle. And at any moment in time, we can be triggered by such. So I wanted to share this piece called Resilience to talk about that, but also just to talk about our strengths as black and brown women, as women throughout the world. So thank you for having me. Um, I'm coming live from Boston, Massachusetts, and this is my poem, Resilience. The saying goes, when the tough get going, the going get tough. Must have not have met my mother. The scars she bears are invisible. Only those with a third eye could see. You see, her body is strong, agile but weakened by her experiences. Black women are to only be strong, no complaints, no check-ins, only checkups to ensure the body is intact. Heavy the head who wears the crown, but I see it slipping. Weight on her shoulder, she carries worlds around. We simply orbit in her universe, even when she's lost in her own space. Who? Who will carry her burdens? I mean, her anxiety, her depression, her bipolar, her wallet. She don't need no man, but society's price tags tells her different stories. Fairy tales unbeknownst to her. For <laughs> she's a dollar in a dream mentality. Don't worry, I got this swag. I can do bad all by myself. No two cents to rub together, but rubbed out meal. Who will nourish her soul? It's tired, been beaten, but not by life, by family who cast her away. Didn't want to help her rewrite her wrongs, running away from generational trauma. She's out of breath. Panic attacks her nervous system. Like a baby she birthed, she self-soothes. Resilient, black women overcome so many obstacles. Black and brown women overcome so many obstacles. And when asked, how are they? They reply, my mother replies. I reply, I'm fine. Thank you all so much. That's my poem, Resilience. Thank you once again, Art Glow, for having me. I'm so honored to be here, and I'm even more blessed to be performing virtually for Africa. Um, hopefully, when COVID-19 is over, um, we can see each other face to face and connect in person. But for now, I just want to thank all of y'all for joining me tonight, and I hope you enjoyed the piece. You can find me at Amanda Shea all day, or you can find me at Amanda Shea on Facebook, Instagram, or you can email me at bookingamandashay.com. Peace, everyone.
There is power in the spoken word. There is power in speech. Power in simply opening one's mouth to speak. There is a humble magic that comes to life when letters roll around your tongue and sparks fly when you let them out. There is a reason for the spells spoken out loud and the gentle but steady rising of your voice when you pray. There is healing in the spoken words, so please speak to me. Tell me your secrets with your eyes closed and allow me to guard them with the cage around my heart. Tell me about the man who touched you where the flowers grew, and let me help you burn the weeds that followed in his wake. Tell me of the nights you spent trying to father yourself into a better man. Unclench your fist, let me hold your hands. Tell me of the holes in your dreams, and allow me to patch them together with my own. Just please speak. There is a difference in the spoken word. One sentence could change that orphan boy's life the way those four words changed yours. You could be burying someone's blessing on the tip of your tongue or have the answers to my prayers caught in your throat. You could have that power, so please speak. Speak up, speak volume, speak things into existence. Speak with the audacity to believe that you are actually saying something. Be that voice, be brave, break the silence. Just please speak. There is strength in the spoken word. Talk yourself off that ledge, one noose after the other. Tell yourself a bedtime story in which you do the saving and are not the damsel. Raise your voice at the voices in your head, telling you that you are not good enough, that you are not worth it. Then whisper gently at the parts of you that still need loving. Just please speak. There is power in the spoken word. There is freedom and liberation for souls long caged. In the spoken word is the song of a bird cage, the secret of the heart notes and love letters waiting to be read. There is power in the spoken word. So please speak. Speak to me, speak to someone, reach out. Just please speak. I would like to say that I miss you, but I don't think I knew you enough to actually miss you. You're never really around to teach me what it means to be a man. See, mom, mom tried, but she, she could never really teach me what it means to be a man. I grew up broken, alone, and desperately trying to find my identity. The problem is, the people I met... TV and music shaped the man in me. See, I was mad. I was mad at you for years because I really wanted you to be around, but it felt like you never loved me enough to want to be around. Because I didn't see you even long before you died. Thinking, will, will I ever know what it means to, to hide under my father's wing? Will I ever go to bed knowing that my father's in the next room ready to jump into my room at the first sign of trouble? I, I still don't know. And, and, and now, now, I've, I've just been down for a while. But people don't notice it. My... My smile is kind of crooked, but people don't see it. I think...
think it's called depression, but I don't want to admit it. It's pretty mild, so I, th I think I can live with it. <laughs> I told someone about it and they told me that I'll be fine. They said, just pray more. Stay positive and, you know, you'll be fine. It's crazy. People want to treat such things with a bandage, but my pain runs deep. It's 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 insecurities. It's it's, it's anxiety. It's depression. It's it's so many other things. It's more than just a heartbreak. But they say I'm fine. They say I'll be fine. Maybe it's because the thought of dealing with such things makes them uncomfortable. When I told them that I felt like committing suicide, they say you. You should come for prayers because that's that's deliverable. And then after prayers, they let me go back to my situation alone instead of helping me walk through it. But then in the darkest times, the Son of God shone his light through my window and told me that he would be there to walk me through it. So now, I'm, I'm starting to learn more and more that if... if if I faint from fun and laughter, or I'm taken by disease and hunger, if if life is as cold as winter, or I'm chilling like it's summer, if I never afford a meal, or I'm always on the come up, if I stay or leave, die or live, it's cool, I know you have because you're in control. Sovereign over everything, got the world wrapped around your finger like a wedding ring, it's interesting. We see you as president instead of king, hilarious, how much you trump authority as human beings, but despite the gap, you're still keeping all your promises. Blessings upon blessings and turning messes into messages, loving and not destroying men. You cannot deny yourself, see angels long to look at this now. Look at me. A broken, shattered, tired depressed, pretty angry, passive-aggressive, sinner, mumbling over everything. But I'm trying. I'm trying to learn what it means to rest in the hands of the Sovereign King. Thank you. everyone, my name is Cass, I'm from Malawi, and welcome to our show. Where you going, little child, don't you know? Where you going, little child, don't you know? Listen to crash on the shore then you know little child where you belong have you ever heard of the expression as many as there are grains of sand that's what people call themselves isn't it well you see I pray to the wind to take me nowhere, and the wind brought me to the sand and told me to walk. And underneath me I could feel every single grain of sand, white and gold and beautiful. This unanimous force, what we know as almost nothing, is made up of these individual, unique, white and golden little gems. 
you are a grain of sand. I am proud to be a grain of sand, golden and gleaming in the sunlight, soaking up the water, dancing in the wind and in the breeze, being a part of something that is bigger than myself. Knowing that whenever someone tries to walk on me, no matter how little they think I am or how big they think they are, they will always feel me under their toes. Indestructible, individual, part of something bigger than myself. I am a grain of sand and maybe just maybe I know where I belong. Hello everybody, my name is Shekwai Madise, aka That Guy. I am speaking to you from Malawi, and I hope you enjoy the show. I don't know much, but I know that you were something. I know you get stressed by society's assumptions placed on your head every single time you function. Make you feel alone like there's no one you can trust in but trust in the Lord and your own understanding. People who attack you are just lonely and abandoned taking out their anger cause they don't know how to manage. They used to feel special now they're nothing on this planet I would disagree and tell them that they still are Shining like a star you can see from afar Never let them pull you in like the sun does to Mars When you break, we break like the tires in a car Stick to your motion like a wave in the ocean Search for your place in the puzzle that is broken Live how you like, there is nothing that you owe them One of a kind and it's time that you showed them Gave me weed, I should have stayed away. Now I can never sleep unless I burn a J. Maybe I'm in too deep, maybe I need to pray. I don't like what they preach, they don't like what I say. As long as I got peace, I will never be afraid. I was faded off the lean, now I'm leaning on my faith. Getting on my knees, cause I gotta give praise. Yeah, I'm getting on my knees, cause I gotta give thanks. I'm not saying that I'm clean, I'm just saying I'm awake. Picture in my dreams. Picture in the frame of my mind and it seems that our kind is the same No I, no you, only we in the frame of freedom and pain But you're free to refrain, free to remain to the feel of your lane For your sake, get to know what is real, what is fake Never let anyone take control of your game Yeah 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 uh, I got hope for my nation Hope we got time to rewind the design before the revelation Hope we can make it, save it What they call Nyasa is greatness Awake in Malawi I know we have been shaken But it is our future We decide how we shape it Circle of life, circle around to the same shit Lame thick niggas wanna claim to the game quick Say you with the youth, huh? Please don't be basic Kids in the streets with degrees that don't need what you feed They need payment The generation is full of vision that get The generation is full of vision that get the generation is full of vision that I can picture and even frame it. Listen to their statements, their hate, and debate them and have a conversation. It really breaks my heart how much potential is wasted, the faking. Is it really worth what you're taking? Straight from a citizen's savings. Yeah. 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 Malawi as I see it as a beautiful place Everybody in it has a beautiful face The conversation is great, denominations of faith Living, coexisting, lifting up the ego and hate 
I relate to the fakes who deceive what we see, who deceive but we see too late that they're snakes, moving low in the grass, they don't know I got the plate, my pen is my sword, battleground is the page, what more can I say that the street saints said, I am not the head, I am just a soldier with a step, black on my fist, revolution on my breath, yes, this is for the children and the next, born to this warm heart, you are forever blessed. We fight for you when never shall we rest. No, never shall we let up, no matter where we end up. Every time allowance fall, we always get up. We always get up. We always get up. No matter where we end up. Every time allowance fall, we always get up. We always get up. We always get up. We always get up. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, that was a great set of performances. Um, I was like speechless. Um, and we have all those artists here with us. As I did say, we did say we'd have a little guest artist as well. Um, so how about we open the floor now for the discussion for the artists. But before that, we had a question in the comments. Thank you to Shaz Mkwazi. You had the question to tell me now. Maybe I'll just read it. So the question was, we know that mental health is taken for granted in Malawi and people seek therapy, are seeking therapy are usually made fun of and are called uh, bougie. bougie. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to normalize people to seek mental health support from therapists without being ridiculed? Mm. We need to remove the stigma around mental health. Maybe you could say I think one of the things is to get to a point where we can normalize the whole discussion about mental health. Nobody is ever shamed for going to a doctor if they're feeling physically ill. That's because everybody has a basic understanding of what health is. And if you're feeling sick, it just seems to be the, 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 the automatic thing to do. So that comes from having more and more discussions about a specific subject. So in the same way, the more we talk about mental health, the more we have discourses like this, um, discussions even in schools or with young people, just people within the communities. Um, there's a project actually that's coming up with Art Glow where um, we're trying to target young people within the local communities and just have them talk about mental health or what they think it is, um, what stigma there is surrounding it. So the more those kinds of conversations come up and it becomes a normalized concept in people's minds, the, the more likely it is that this kind of stigma would reduce and then people will be more open to talking about it. Yes, thank you very much. And yes, the project, we'll talk about that a bit more after we finish our discussion. But now I'd like to open it up to the actual artists themselves. I'll start with Amanda. Amanda, thank you for your performance, your piece, very relevant to the current social climate and political climate that we have at the moment. Yeah. Um, could you just briefly tell us your inspiration, tell us uh, the story around it. Um, thank you. First of all, can I just say that this is an absolutely incredible. Like I feel so full from just all of the talented artists that are here. This af Well, it's afternoon here for me. I know it's nighttime over there for you all, but this is just absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for having me. I would say, Resilience, uh, for me, that word means strength and that no matter what you're going through, you're going to persevere regardless. Um, the piece initially came out of an event that was to empower women in, here in Boston. And I just started thinking about my mother and my mom is uh, bipolar level two. Uh, she was diagnosed about 16 years ago. Growing up with her was really, really difficult um, because at the time she was not diagnosed properly and she also used um, drugs, to be completely honest. So she was an addict who also suffered from a mental health disorder. Um, when you do drugs such as cocaine, 
it basically counteracts the same type of emotions that you would have when you're in a manic episode. So no, learning those things and having her get diagnosed properly and take meds, it was really tough on my childhood because I would get screamed at, I would get yelled at, I would get hit. Um, I would be punished. It was like walking on eggshells in my own home. It allowed me to, um, it, it, it forced me to be very um, conscientious about when I spoke, how I spoke and what my actions would do to potentially get me in trouble or, or receive some type of punishment. So when I was writing resilience, I thought about all of those things. But at the same time, I thought to myself, well, it's not her fault that she has this mental health disorder. It is not on her that she wasn't able to cope correctly with it because she wasn't diagnosed properly. So it made me kind of sympathize with her as me being her daughter. It made me sympathize um, with her just on a more human, personable level understanding that she is a woman in her own right and her background, her childhood was really, really difficult. And because of those things, it amplified her mental health. So for me, I wanted to write a piece that basically talked about that when I say her anger, her, her depression, her anxiety, her bipolar, her wallet, who will carry her burdens. Mental health is not a burden, but it can be to some people when they don't receive the correct treatment or they are unaware or unknown or it's unbeknownst to them that they even have this, this type of mental health disorder. Um, and I need to stop saying disorder because I don't believe in, in claiming that it is a disorder because when you say that something is a disorder, then that means that it may or may not be able to be fixed, right? Or may or may not be able to be corrected or, or regulated, I should really say. So for me, the piece resilience was really about capturing my mom's struggles from a human perspective, a woman perspective, but as her daughter from my perspective, but then also capturing what other women go through. One of my other best friends um, is a mental health advocate who also suffers from bipolar disorder, bipolar level one. And I watch her deal with it and understand that it is something that we need to be more cognizant of, that we need to destigmatize. Um, I suffer from anxiety myself. I didn't realize I had anxiety until my 30s. I also didn't understand that I had social anxiety as well. So pre even performing sometimes, I can have an episode, which could mean a multitude of things. I can shut down, I can start shaking my body will feel as though I have no control. And it's a very scary situation. For me, I'm still trying to figure out ways to cope with that. Um, but yeah, that's where the piece had came from. And I just wanted to let people know that not only are black and brown women are resilient, but there also are mental health issues that lie within just from a social aspect, a cultural aspect and a societal aspect. As we know, black and brown women are always demeaned for just existing. We are told that we're too loud, that we're too sassy, that we have too much attitude, that we are not afforded the same rights to education. Sometimes we are decriminalized for even existing. Our hair, uh, the way that our skin tone is, the way our voice dictation and how we speak. So I just wanted to create a piece that basically embodied all of those things in the best way that I possibly could. Um, so yeah, that's where it came from. Yeah. No, thank you so much. We understand that perspective and we can really feel that in your performance and we hear that emulated. I think it's really quite a beautiful piece. Um, yeah, do you have any more to add? Um, no, I, I think it was beautiful and I would just like to say thank you to everybody else. I was moved by all of your pieces and also excited. It really excites me when people are honest because I don't see it a lot. So thank you so much for just pouring your hearts out through your music and through your poetry. And um, so my question is for Cass, who I'm blessed to know personally as somebody who's always open and honest. Um, so Cass... <laughs> What inspired you to write the piece that you wrote and why did you choose to perform it tonight or this afternoon for some? Hello. Uh, so, um, the piece that I 
How do I perform tonight? Can you all hear me? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, so the piece that I performed tonight was called A Grain of Sand. And um, it's really, it basically talks about how um, we often feel, okay, I shouldn't say we, let me talk about myself, how I often feel insignificant in the world, how I feel like um, as many there are grains of sand, as there are as many problems in the world, there are as many people in the world, and no one needs to deal with me, no one needs to listen to me. I'm not special, I don't stand out, I'm literally just a grain of sand, unnoticeable. And um, I, I, had, I had the privilege recently of um, being able to move to the beach for a bit. And I, I needed to get away because um, I have a major depressive disorder. Okay, don't use the word disorder, but okay. For the sake of, for the sake of, um, for, of this discussion, let me use the word major depressive disorder. So MDD is basically clinical depression. Um, you get diagnosed from the hospital by a doctor and I go to therapy and I say I'm going to therapy all the time. I go to therapy. I try to go um, at least once a week. Um, if you, I don't think I'm bougie. <laughs> I don't think I'm bougie, um, but yeah, I, I go to therapy and therapy is very important. It really helps to just be able to talk to someone. Um, but yes, well, we can talk about the importance of therapy later. Let's talk about um, the poem, A Grain of Sand. So um, when I got to the beach, um, I like to walk on the beach a lot. And it's one of my favorite things is to feel the sand under my feet. And it never feels like mud. It's always these individual grains of sand that you can feel under your feet and in between your toes. And it taught me something that no matter how small I think I am, or no matter how insignificant I think I am to the world, or even when I think I don't contribute anything, if a grain of sand can make an impact under someone's foot, then I, I definitely make an impact in this world. And every single grain of sand shines, it sparkles, it gleams. I have that light inside me. Everyone has that light inside me. We all sparkle, we all gleam. We're all a part of something that's bigger than ourselves. And we don't have to conform to stand out or to be a part of something. Dare to be different, dare to be yourself. Don't be afraid to be yourself because we're all different. We're supposed to connect in our differences, you know? So that's why I wrote this poem because I, a lot of the time, I feel like I'm not enough. I feel like I'm so insignificant, but I'm a grain of sand and I might be little, but I make such a big difference to the world, you know? Yeah, so yes, that's it. This is your question. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Cass. Um, I, just working with you, we've worked together on a few occasions as well. It's always a pleasure to see how you put your heart and your own struggles into the work that you do and really love the piece as well. Um, I think next, let's see, um, Pindu, are you on the line? We'd like to also hear from you to talk a bit about your piece as well. What made you talk about it and what, where did the inspiration come from? Hi everyone, I'm sitting Hi. outside in the booth. Well, um, my network is terrible and so I needed to sit outside for the historic. Um, let's see. Okay, this is better. Um, so when I, I wrote speak, I I was going, um, so I couldn't write. So I forced myself to sit down and you know, write something. And um, in order to do that, I reminded myself why I started writing in the first place. And that is because I, I needed someone to speak to me. And so I wrote the poem for myself just to remind myself that I need to, I need to speak. I need to, I need to just basically speak. And um, so that poem got me through, got me through that spell of sadness because I, I was able to speak to myself in the mirror and just say, yo, dude, this is what's going on. Um, because I realize it's, it's really easy to say, yo, reach out to someone and speak to someone, tell someone what you're going through. But I personally haven't always been able to speak to other people. I think we, sorry, but, Kendall, you're breaking up. 
don't even know what I'm going to do. No! I went to an entire moment. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Um, can you try again? Maybe just the last part there? We're kind of breaking up a bit, sorry. Um, all right. So, I was saying, can you hear me better now? Yeah, 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 that's better. Okay, cool. I was saying that um, as easy as it is to tell people to reach out to someone, to reach out to a friend, or find a therapist and talk to them about their problems, I have found that it's not always that simple. That sometimes what works for me is standing in front of the mirror and talking to myself or just lying in bed and saying out loud the things that are bothering me or what I'm going through at that moment. And that has been a form of self-healing as well. Just being able to acknowledge that I have a voice and I can hear myself even when I don't feel like other people will or that I can talk to anyone else, that I can just, you know, speak. Okay. I think we're, sorry, Pindu. I think we're having technical difficulties on your end. I think it's just the networking side. So, to speak and to the whole wide world, as well as that. Oh, sorry, Pindu. Pindu, but we got the gist of what you were talking about. It's We're sorry that you couldn't finish the comment. Sorry, the Maui network sometimes goes off and on, and mm -hmm. it has not been kind, kind to us the past few days. You? No. no it has not been kind. <laughs> but we appreciate it, and yes, we get the sense of your voice in that. Um, who do you want to ask next? Um, I want to ask Chim about his piece, and I really love the fact that he incorporated his spiritual journey um, and what it means for him uh, and connected it with mental health, because I don't see a lot of people talking about those two things together. Yeah. Um, so I loved it. And yeah, what inspired you to write it and why did you want to share it with us this evening? Um, I think um, for me, it was just being in a space where, like, the inspiration was just the fact that I grew up without a father, and like, <clears throat> you, you go through life thinking everything is okay until you realize that certain things are missing. And so, yeah, I think it was just getting to that place of realizing, man, this is missing from my life. Um, I don't know how to handle certain issues and realizing that a lot of the things that I felt were lacking in my life were stemming from, you know, not having a father in my life um, as I was growing up. So I think that really affected me and it, it tends to put you in a place where I think I only started to realize it when I started to have people around me who became like father figures to me, people who would teach me things, people who would walk with me. And I think that made me realize, oh snap, I missed out on a lot. Like there's so much that I don't know. There's so much that I, that I haven't experienced. And I feel like not having those things put me in a place where I started to like, you know, you start, you get to a place where you start to doubt yourself. You get to a place where you don't have an identity because like no one told you how to be anything. No one told you how how to walk like this, how to be this, or, or what to do. So therefore, all you end up doing is just doing whatever feels right. And I think that's just, that just led to me spiraling down a path of defining myself with the wrong things and being the wrong thing in general. And yeah, I think that put me in positions where I wasn't all right. And, all, and that, that just led to more and more things going on. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's really true. I think um, the spiral that happens once you start going down that path is, and then the community around does not make it any better because it just pushes you and pushes you more in the same direction. Um, but like um, like Annette was saying about the aspect of faith, I think I saw a comment also on Facebook. Maybe I can just, um, I just want to read it out. There was a question here that said, how can we integrate faith houses 
a mental institution in so that we can be on the same page. Uh, says, I ask this because sometimes the local priest comes across such a situation, but is ill-equipped to handle it. Mm -hmm. What do you think can be done? And this is a comment by uh, Mvenji. Oh, actually, it's <laughs> your husband. Yeah. OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a coincidence. So, Chim, uh, your perspective is quite interesting. Uh, maybe you can weigh in a bit on that yeah. as well. Um, yeah. Um, actually, it's very interesting that this question comes up because I remember a couple of years ago, one of the students at the university where I work who was majoring in psychology did a whole dissertation about this, specifically how um, faith leaders and how, how faith leaders have an understanding about issues to do with mental health and how they can help. Um, I was patients. Hey, patients, if you're watching. But um, what 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 it came to was that the kind of training that faith leaders go through um, needs to incorporate aspects of mental health, because in many cases, people who are religious leaders are usually the first point of contact for so many people who are facing different types of stress and pressure and they're going through life problems. And if it's at a point where they need counseling and this particular religious leader is not really trained in how to provide counseling or even how to direct that person to a place where they can get um, psychotherapy, uh, then the person is likely to suffer. And I think another thing that could be a problem is the understanding that issues to do with mental health and issues to do with a person's faith always have to be at loggerheads with each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a problem that a lot of people who have a faith that they ascribe to tend to feel guilty when they start having some kind of mental challenge because they think, well, something must be wrong with me. I must be a significant type of sinner, you know, if, if I'm having these problems, because if I go to say church or I go to the mosque and I say, you know, I'm feeling depressed, they tell me, well, there's no such thing. If you were really a devout Christian, Muslim, you wouldn't be feeling this way. So I, I think it's very important to have that kind of training, just an understanding of how counseling or psychotherapy can help even at the level of um, faith leaders so that the two can go hand in hand. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you very much. Um, and thank you, Chen, also your piece. It was very enlightening. Um, we do have one more, our special guest who came in last minute into it. Shekwa. Shekwa. That guy. That guy. <laughs> um, if you're on the line, we'd like to, your inspiration behind your piece as well. Yeah, give us a little bit more about that. Sorry, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Right, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, so the three pieces I did were um, excerpts from an album I'm making right now, an upcoming album. Um, and it centered around the concept of mental health awareness among young people, because I feel like we're, or Malawi rather, here, we are on the age of an enlightenment period where a lot of people are becoming aware of the fact that something is not right and that there's a conversation or a dialogue that must be had, but we are not going that extra step, you know? I think, I think that's a really dangerous thing to do because there are a lot of young people, and as the fellow artists have said, there are a lot of young people in schools that, you know, they, they feel like going to a therapist are gonna be laughed at. A lot of my friends see therapists, but they would never tell anyone else that, you know? And I feel that it's only when you open up to other people about how you feel that we can start becoming comfortable with normalizing conversation because we all want to we all want to help each other and we all want to be helped. But I feel like it's just scary on letting yourself out there for the people. So these pieces were based around that, around the concept of that affecting in a political way, you know, and how it's affecting the current generation, the current generation, the current youth. Um, the other one was about the self and how, you know, mental health, avoiding mental health can really weigh on you in a way. Um, a line that a lot of people 
yeah, a line that a lot of people just to wrap up here, pretty much wraps up my whole point is that a, uh, a line that a lot of people come to me and tell me that um, there's this line that says, I was faded off the lean, now I'm leaning on my faith, right? Mm. And to me, that's when I, when I came up with it, it was kind of off the fly, but it came from a really deep place because me being a musician, me being a rap, a guy in rap, a rap man, um, there are a lot of young people right now doing trap and a lot of people don't really take it seriously. You know, it's, it's sort of become a joke, but when you're like me and you're growing up shoulder to shoulder with these people, you really get to see that it's sort of a cry for help. You know, there are some real things that a lot of young people are going through that they don't feel comfortable, comfortable to talk about. You know, maybe they make a song about it, put a catchy beat on there, catchy chorus, you know, all you hear is that. And we dismiss it all the time. But I feel like in places like that, it's really important to look into what, what the incoming generate, sorry, what the incoming generation's perspective of mental health and, you know, having that conversation, what they think should be done. And I think we can really have a middle ground, you know, people from all ages, we can really start to normalize and, and have that conversation. So yeah, that was my inspiration. Okay. No, thank you so much. It was a really beautiful piece. Um, and yeah, it really, we all just felt it as well. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, so on that note, uh, we are, just about wrapping up here. For those of you who are joining us over HowlRound, thank you very much for making the time. Um, and then for those of you who are able to log in through Facebook Live and also actually watch, watch this live, mm -hmm. we thank you also for joining us. Uh, the comments are very positive, very community building, mm -hmm. and we encourage you to continue these conversations moving forward. Um, as we said a little bit before, we are starting a project on mental health and um, talking about mental health stigma in the community around us, specifically here in Zomba, Malawi. You can continue to follow this page and see progress of this project. Um, we like to thank McGinnity Foundation for helping us to get this off the ground and also sponsoring the launch of this. HowlRound, who is our streaming partner here and for just streaming and also being very supportive in helping on the technical side. Malika, who beyond just performing has also been our host because our internet here has been fuzzy the past few days. Yeah. So she's done a great job also of just co-hosting. Uh, big up to her. And then all the artists of uh, Tigris, Amanda, Shekwa, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, yeah. Wati, Menes, Hindu, uh, Malika herself, uh, Cass, uh, I think that's her, and Chim, I don't want to forget you, Chim. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a blast. And yeah. honestly, thank you so much. Yeah. Um, I think as we start this new project um, called Zamuti Zam, Masizaweka, uh, we really want this to be the thing that emulates going forward. So we really want to engage with the youth in the community, talk about stigma, engage with the local authorities and see how to really um, end this uh, stigma that's happening in our communities. Yeah. So um, I think what I will do as well, um, Thank you so much for being with us here. You're welcome. Uh, it Such was nice pleasure. to have the psychological side. Yes, yes. It's been great. I enjoyed it. Um, I also thank you for being co-hosting with me, Annette. Um, sorry. Uh, before we go, uh, we just like to thank all of our viewers uh, and all of our uh, our individual donors on our global giving page. Uh, we had a huge global giving campaign trying to just fundraise for some of the aspects of this project that usually get underfunded. And we had really good response. And for those of you who are still looking to donate, please, the floor is still open. We're hoping to continue this sort of conversation and these sort of projects moving forward. So please uh, go to global giving. Um, we'll put a link in the comments down below. But Thank you all for tuning in. Um, my name is Lakwe Di Magombo. This is Annette and Tilly Now. <laughs> thank you so much. You all have a great evening and 
continue, be positive, continue to spread positivity out into the world. Zamun